Welcome to Who's Views. It's Chit Chat. Yes, it's that part of uh, the channel where I get to meet with fellow fans and have a good old blether, as we say here in Scotland. And here I am, being joined by the one and only Mark D. Hiya. Hello. How are we? <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, really well, thank you. Really oh, well. Good. So, uh, yes. No, it's uh, been a uh, good who time catching up in the who cave. But uh, as said, we all know I like my classic series, uh, and uh, watch that over and over. Absolutely, and as I can, as you see, he is he is broadcasting from his very own who cave. Now, your who cave, as you call it, is is a separate building to your house, isn't it? And it's just full of your own memorabilia. Yes. This is um, my little uh, hideaway from the world. It's uh, <laughs> This is uh, version Mark II because we moved house, unfortunately, about a year and a half ago. So I had to uh, recreate uh, what I had created originally. Um, but, yeah, it took about four months. Luckily, the, the, the place we moved to had a very large building that I was able to separate from the house. So mm. I was able to uh, amend that and... Uh, Turn it into Who Cave Mark Two, so but uh, well worth the the effort putting. I'm sure it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And was it bigger than your original one? Yes, yes, it is. A um, my original one uh, was about five meters by six meters, but solely purely for the collection. But unfortunately, it started to grow anyway, and things started to. Uh, I guess it was. Um, I had it all in the house for many years, and then Ooh, uh, yeah. eventually. I uh, got to the point where my dear wife said, okay, build your shed. So Who Cave Mark 1 was born and uh, all my merchandise ended up in there and then it started to grow. So, yeah. um, and yeah. then uh, it started to, yeah, it started to swell a little bit and then obviously we moved. And uh, so this this uh, building that I'm in now um, is marginally bigger than the previous. Um, so I've got a little bit more space to put some some larger items in if I choose. This so. this is the problem when you've got actually the space to do this because you fill it, don't you? And it just it, it can get a little bit out of control. Yeah, collecting is one of those things, JT. Like, uh, oh, I must have that. That looks really nice. That would look <laughs> really good. And uh, and next thing you know, you've got a, sh a, a building full of it. So, I don't, yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, I sort of like, it's not the biggest collection ever, but um, it's just how I display it, I guess, and that's that's what I enjoy, just the, how how you lay them out. I love my character options figures. So, mm. you know, I generally, you know, I'll set the dioramas up or I'll, um, you know, so I'm, I'm a bit of a, a mixture of in-the-box and out-of-the-box guy. So uh, yeah, um, a long time ago, a friend of mine had a look at the original Who Cave and saw all, they were all in boxes sitting yeah. on the shelf, and he goes, well, this looks fantastic, but um, it reminds me of a toy store. And I'm like, yeah, he says, why don't, do you not even think of taking some of them out? So I had to think about it and decided, you know what, they would look nice if I set them up. So I now have a portion of the collection. Um, or as some of us do now, we buy one for the box and one for display. That's what that's what I I do of course you know buy buy one for the box and one for the display only on certain things I don't go mad only on certain things that I really like but I don't really tend to buy that much more anymore because the merchandise for me has has just gone off, off the boil a little bit. Yes, you just have to uh, pull the reins in occasionally, I guess. Um, yeah. But again, I, I I'm a bit more specific collector these days. I don't just mm. buy anything with Doctor Who printed on it. Yeah. Um, I think I you know, I've I've got a love of the classic series. So I'm sort of now going back and looking for little bits and pieces that remind me of those th those times growing up. You know, I think John John Pertwee, Tom Baker. Tom Baker is obviously my doctor. He's he's the man for me. But John Pertwee was also his um, constant repeats in Australia. Um, yeah, know, forever we'd be watching and not in order, uh, which I think has been discussed on who's news before over here. Yes. It's all over the place. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I, you know, as I, say, as I say to everybody from Australia, you were, you were lucky in a sense because you were getting those lovely repeats. Whereas us in the United Kingdom, of course, we weren't. We didn't get that many repeats. And if we did, it was the doctor that was on the telly at the time. So it was a treat to get a Pertwee repeat. But it didn't really happen once Tom really took off here. If you got a repeat, it was going to be Tom. You know. So I said, mm. I, I feel blessed that we had so much Baker and Pertwee and Davidson. You know, it was 
that was the time I sort of grew up and and what I ended up constantly watching. So yeah, uh, fabulous. Yeah, I remember primary school. Um, you know, funny little story. I had a friend of mine who moved from Scotland uh, in grade six, and it was someone else who loved Doctor Who, and I was like, wow, there's not a lot of us people because at school back then, um, I didn't. There wasn't a lot of people at my school who loved Doctor Who. We had the Target or the um, the hardbacks in the library, and I'd mm-hmm. go and, and grab some of those. Um, and then all of a sudden this new guy started at school and he said, yeah, my mum and dad said when we come from Scotland I had a choice, my toys or my books, and he chose his books. So he had oh. all of the uh, original, you know, uh, the TARDIS toy and the the, the, the robot and uh, all that. And back then I was mortified. Why did you leave those behind? Because we never <laughs> had, you know, I never had those as a kid growing up. Yeah. So, um, but, yeah, look, at that's that was probably my intro into who is around the primary junior school years um, and just constant uh, viewing tea time on the ABC television uh, as a kid. And uh, funnily enough, I couldn't get enough of it as a child. So we'd have a, they also used to simulcast on FM radio, uh, the ABC television. And so I was, if we had to go out somewhere, I didn't want to miss Doctor Who. So I'd take my little portable radio with me, put the batteries in it and tune in so I could listen to it. No way, really. Rather than, yeah. So uh, ABC simulcast the television station for a period of years, uh, so I could we could go out for a drive and I could listen to what was on ABC television on the radio. I never knew that. So, yes. Wow. So I I just have a couple of vague recollections of sitting in the back of Dad's old wagon, going for a drive, and I was like, I'm going to miss Doctor Who. So I took the radio with me, put the batteries in and uh, tuned in and listened to uh, Tom Baker as we were driving around. So couldn't see it, but at least I could hear him. Yeah. Well, at least your imagination was going at that point as well, because you would have had to, of course, uh, realise in your head what was happening in the story. Yeah, correct. And it's hard to pick because I started watching Doctor Who when I was probably six or seven. Uh, Yeah. I think with all of us, we have those little fleeting memories or little... uh, little moments captured in time in your brain that you sort of just have. Uh, and I have little memories of mum and dad had a, an old black and white television in the spare room. Um, so I think my first exposure to Doctor Who was black and white and it may have been John Pertwee, repeat, um, or a baker. Um, it seems to sort of meld together. Um, and then the, the merchandise little bug started at a very young age when I was walking with my dad through a supermarket and I spotted the TARDIS technical manual. So that must have been early 80s. Um, 83, yeah. So it was about 83, yeah. I think. Um, so, yeah, so that was, I just remember seeing that, the, which I still have it. Um, it's it's seen better days. It's still not too bad, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's um, that was my first book that I ever got. Um, and, you know, the schematics of the TARDIS and, you know, the, the Daleks and the Sidemen. And was that your first bit? Nice that, that was your first bit of merchandise then? Yeah, first bit yeah. of merchandise. And then followed by, I think there was a Peter Davison ad, annual that um, my parents got me. Right. Um, and then a very, very rare item, which I no longer have, unfortunately, was the Doctor Who Australian show bag. Um, oh, yes, yes. Which, uh, yeah, the Tom Baker show bag. Um and I have great memories of uh, popping out the TARDIS and putting it together. And I think there was a Weetabix um, game, uh, the reproduction of from the box, um, and the I think it was Invisible Ink. Uh, and I had it all, and uh, and the little Tom Baker badge. And uh, over the years, the bits and pieces decided to go missing. Course, I think Mum yeah. just wanted to clean out a little bit. So, uh, um, but yeah, I've sadly, long gone. Mm. Yeah, but, um, yeah, good memories. Anyway, but that that was probably my my first look merchandise wise into who. Um, mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Yeah, and now surrounded by it as you are. Well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing how the the bug gets you, isn't it? Really, you just you know once you discover one thing, you want another, and then it grows and grows and grows and grows over the years. It's it's incredible. The, the, the ABC show bag you're talking about there. Now, I've heard about this and I've seen pictures of it, but how did you get it? Did you have to go to write to ABC at the time, or, or what was the what was no? The so it was um, it was actually just a a, a Doctor Who themed show bag that was available at the um, 
at the show. It was a, a regional, so where I grew up in uh, country Victoria uh, in Australia, they had they have like the Melbourne show, they'd have the the regional shows. We could buy all the show bags and the rides and and you know, and so there would just be a a van set up with all the different show bags above. And I just remember, I think I got Doctor Who and the Fall Guy. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, and they just have little toys and bits and pieces. Even wow. many years ago, I got a Star Wars show bag that was giving away figures. So, uh, yeah, so that's, it was just at one of our local uh, shows. Um, right. And very rare item these days. I've, a friend of mine's got, got one mostly complete, and there's a couple of other people I know who've got one. Um, but yeah, it's uh, mine's gone in the sands of time, unfortunately. Oh, it's a shame, isn't it? Really, but you know, what a great, what a great gimmick for them there to actually promote some of the shows they're putting on their on their on their screens on their channel by giving away little promotional bags mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. So, um, and again, it was uh, I've now retained. I've got one of the little uh, Tom Baker badges. It was just basically a plastic backed badge with the cardboard insert of Tom. You know, nice. one of the popular 80s photos of Tom in there. So I've got that back now. Um, but, uh, yeah, pride and place in my little Tom Baker display in my cabinet. So, um, <laughs> But, yeah, that, that was my introduction to merchandise. And, uh, and now it's just sort of grown around me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mentioned you mentioned that you're interested uh, um, and that you like the character options one. So you're like you're like myself. You've got a, a hell of a lot of character options figures in your collection, and you very kindly sent me a couple of photographs. Uh, and I want to talk about these prototypes you've got. Now, are these your favourite um, um, figures? Yeah, they're a um, they're a recent addition. So um, on my recent uh, UK holiday, um, <clears throat> I was very very fortunate um, to meet Al Juar um, mm -hmm. amongst a few other people at a very special lunch that was put on for me um, with a friend of mine. And uh, it was just very surreal just sitting down and talking to Al uh, about, you know, these things that I'd collected. Um, and uh, he sort of walked over and presented me with these two little figures. Um, and uh, from I think, and obviously they're from the most current, waves um but yeah so the test shots slash prototype i think they call them test shots these days mm -hmm. some people refer to them as prototypes but um yeah so it was a very surreal moment a to meet the man who's been responsible for all the little things i've been collecting for a long time and yeah. then to sit down and have a conversation with him about you know the line and and the previous stuff he's done and then to be presented with a couple of figures was just a you know an awesome little gift and uh yeah pride and place in the cabinet now all right but tom are, are you uh, well tom's your favorite of course he is of course he is my so listen are you are you um collecting all the character options figures now or are you being selective like i am yeah no i would say that um probably a little bit uh selective originally i was sort of i would buy them when i saw them um and then obviously with the changeover, when B&M started running them in the UK, we didn't get every single wave in Australia. So uh, I've tried to, it, I'd have to resort to eBay or contacts in the UK to source them for me. Yeah. Um, which sometimes became difficult. Um, and obviously, depending on the eBay sellers, depending on how much you're prepared to pay for them as well. So obviously, we all know that sometimes with the scalping and so forth that's allegedly goes on. Um, yeah, we don't always, I'd still get them, but, you know, probably, you know, double the price almost of what you would pay on the shelf mm. in a B&M. So, but, you know, determined, as I said, I focus on the classic figure range. I'm now going back and trying to pick up some of the ones I've missed um, originally. Um, I'm, uh, the last few years I've been a little bit more focused on collecting the figures, so... But there was a time where, um, unfortunately, Doctor Who wasn't a big uh, thing on my radar. I still had my collection, but it was very stagnant. I've sort of gone through the years, as we all do, where we sort of not lose interest but other priorities. So, um, yeah, so I'd collect for a bit, then I'd stop, and then I'd collect again or I'd pick up the odd bargain when they were clearing out figures. But uh, I've got most of the original classic series character option figures um and a few of the new series ones that i've collected as well but mainly yeah mainly mainly the classic but yeah. still trying to go back and fill up the gaps now 
there's something really special about the the original series action figures. I, it might stem from the fact that when we were kids, we all wanted them and didn't get them because Star Wars, of course, was huge, and their action figures were were yeah. so popular, you know, and and much sought after today as well, aren't they? But you know, as Doctor Who fans, as yeah. as as I, when I was collecting the Star Wars ones, um, all I wanted was Doctor Who action figures as well. And the nearest we got was the Dennis Fisher range. So there's something special about the character options ones from the proper series now, the original series, because you know there's a, there's a, a gravi you, you, you gravitate towards them, don't you? you say, oh yeah, I must. Oh, Deadly Assassin. Oh yes, I must have that. Yeah, I think when they released the the classic uh, wave, that first wave of, of figures. Um, you know, the Bok robots and, you know, uh -huh. uh, you know, the Cyberman and the Master and you know, all that original range. It was like, oh, my God, I've wanted these things since I was a kid, you know, because, yeah. again, uh, you know, sad life as a kid. I'd read the books. I didn't have – I'd had Star Wars figures, but I didn't have Doctor Who figures. So I'd resort to making little cutouts or did my, drew my own TARDIS and made my own figures because I didn't have them. So yeah. uh, the, the, the things you do when you're a kid. And then I guess as an adult, um, it's the want or the need to fulfil yourself with and surround yourself with childhood memories. And I think that's probably what's driven my collection. Um, mm. And especially because it's in its own separate space, uh, I can come in here and switch on the television and put on a Baker or a Pertwee or a Davidson or something and sit down and just wind the clock back and immerse myself into classic Who um, and look around the room and be surrounded by bits and pieces from the show's history. Mm. And I think that's why I like. That's why I like collecting JT. I think so. Um, mm. And uh, you know, and, and again, being able to meet actors from the program and stuff has not always been easy. Living over here, um, yeah. From time to time, over the years we've we've managed to get a few of the actors here. Um, so I've been very privileged over the last well since I was probably about eighteen, nineteen. Went to a few, you know, locally put on who events. And uh, you know, met you know people like Fraser Hines or Sophie Aldred, um, you know, and I've been to a couple of latter events where we had multiple doctors, classic doctors here around the 50th anniversary time. Yes, so, yeah, uh, yeah. That was um, that was uh, you know we, we had a thing called Lords of Time, which was a big um, sort of convention put on when everything merchandise and everything was booming around that time of the 50th. Um, yeah. We only have to look at all the character. Dr. Dalek sets that were popping around as well. And, um, so, yeah, so it was great because I got to meet, you know, a lot of the classic series doctors. Um, Tom, unfortunately, I haven't met, but, you know, past Tom, obviously I've met uh, all the classics and even Paul McGann and um, Colin and, and Peter and uh, so and Sylvester. Um, but, it, but that's been, you know, that's been great. And then obviously... Uh, my love of figures and my love of uh, – and then I got – in 2003, I got to go for my first trip to the UK um, where I attended uh, the Langollen uh, exhibition. And that was probably my first uh, foray into um, seeing real props and costumes. Oh, really? Yeah, of course, yeah. 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 And, that, and that sort of segued fast-forwarding to the last couple of years where I touched base with Alex Storer. Um, who's a friend of whose views, and uh, mm -hmm. I posted some pictures, my old pictures from 20 years ago on the Dapol site, and Alex reached out to me and said, these look great. I'm working on a book with John Collier. We're doing this, uh, which is a book still to come out. Um, so that led me into a few months of uh, collaborating and supplying, you know, photos and images and assisting and being a contributor to a book which is due to come out at some point. Yeah, um, yeah, which yeah, and that led to uh, evolution of the toy Dalek book, which I think you've spoken to Alex about uh, as well. Yeah, he's so, been on. Uh, we've got actually one of your pictures because we're going to say to you one of the great things about you taking some of your figures out is that you do play with them, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yes, I, li I like my photography. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and this, uh, it was, you did this for Alex's because, book, didn't you? Yes. So that some of these uh, fi the figure shots um, are from the book. Um, it, as said, it started as a simple conversation. Once I'd finished my contribution to the Langollen uh, ebook project, uh, Alex and I sort of kept chatting, and uh, he said, "Oh, look, I'm working on a project 
And I said, well, I'd love to help. And he wanted a, an Australian perspective of um, collecting of Daleks. And he knew that I'd had a little bit of a collection. So um, it sort of went from there. I wrote wrote an article for the book and then we started discussing what sort of photos. And because I have, I'm surrounded by Daleks, um, I said, well, look, I love taking some photos. So we just kept you know, looking at ideas and uh, taking some photos, smoke machines and all sorts of things just to get some real, you know, really good effects. Um, and so I think I, you know, inundated Alex with a lot of photos, which a lot of them made their way into the book, which was really great. And I think um, combined with myself and Alex and a few other contributors, uh, I think they ended up being with about 300 original photos for that book. Wow. So it's always better to have more than, than less, though, isn't it, you know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, but you know I've got my few favourites, and I think they're the ones I gave you. But uh, I said that that Davros and the Daleks eerie looking photo just come up really well. Just uh, took the photo at the right time. Yeah, I mean I love seeing all these sort of things, not just from yourself, but from other fans as well. Um, and when you look at them, you suddenly realise, oh, hang on a minute, these are the action figures because people are very creative. Mm. Like you've been creative there with the, with the, the the dry ice around it and all this sort of stuff. You can really go to town with them, can't you? Oh, I've seen some really nice uh, photography with the character figures. And they said the, the character figures are really well detailed. You've got your Daleks and your Davros and that, which are, you know, very accurate or pretty close to accurate to what we watch on screen. So, um, you know, having them posed in position and, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that do, you know, outdoor shots and perspective shots um, and they, they look really fantastic. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I guess that's what just um, that love of who, isn't it? I think we all go back to it uh, gives you, it makes you happy doing some of those things. And I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I've been glad to contribute to the couple of those books. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it, uh, so I said, I think uh, John and Alex will have that. Well, John's still, you know, finalising that and that'll come out in due course. And I'm sure you'll be able to talk to the boys and, you um, Oh, I'm yeah. sure they'll sure they appear at some point telling us all about it. Um, yeah, mm. something to look forward to. Talking about Alex, though, you 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 were back in the, uh, Britain last year. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was. Um, I, as I said, I um, had a very big whirlwind tour of of the <laughs> UK, and uh, it was over about a three week period. Um, but a lot of planning was it only three weeks. Involved. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it seemed longer, um, but it was a crazy time, uh, <laughs> and I travelled by myself. And, but I had to meticulously plan every little step. There were still a couple of things I didn't get to do and see. Um, All right, okay. Ideally, yeah, it was um, – I sort of went from London up through Sheffield up to see Neil Cole at his museum where we caught up. And and uh, and got to meet face to face, which was really good. We did, yeah. Um, that was a good that was there. Yeah. And Neil's museum, like I've been friends with Neil for a long time, uh, and um, conversing with Neil, and I'd always threatened that I'd go and visit him, and uh, and then it, it came to fruition, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was great. So uh, you know, as I said, but it was a lot of a lot of planning. I had to work it because obviously a lot of time and distance and travelling. Absolutely. Because um, I think from London to uh, Allendale is like five and a half hours if, if you drive straight without a stop. So mm. um, so I had to, you know, pretty much meticulously plan. But as I said, for me, it was a very big who holiday. Um, and from the moment I landed, I pretty much didn't stop. First thing yeah. I saw when I got out of Earl's Court was the, was the big police box, um, which was a sign for me that this was going to be an interesting holiday. So... <laughs> <laughs> and again, uh, my first my first few days in London were really good. I caught up with a friend of mine, um, and uh, he'd organised a bit of a surprise for me, and that's where I got to meet Al Jua, um, Mike Tucker, um, Rob Alsop, um, and so I, Al was there with his brother. Um, it was just, and then David Banks and Mark Hardy. So, yeah. you know, to to walk up to a restaurant and stand, there's a guy standing there in the doorway just looking down at me and um, and, he, and it's like, oh, so you're Mark. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, 
it was a great it was a great time and, and mm. uh yeah got to, to network with a few people and and it was great just um you know speaking to kid, you know someone you watch as in your, as a childhood thing watching the cybermen you know i love i love the cybermen really and, i've uh, never noticed yeah <laughs> this is one of yours isn't it this is this is a picture you've taken yeah. this is your cyberman in your in your in your who cave there yes it's uh it's a reproduction but um i think from this planet earth originally i think yeah um, yeah but uh yeah full size um i've even got the cyber gun to go with it mm. yeah he's, uh, he's a good talking it's a good, yeah, well, it would be a good talking point. Yeah, seeing that, and you've lit it beautifully. Thank you again. Uh, it was, I think, uh, the lighting in here is what I really love to do. Like, it just, I think it's invocative of going back to those days of the exhibitions, um, yeah. which is something I discussed with Neil. Um, you know, how Neil has his museum set up is is fantastic. Like, he's got everything. It's it's such a small space, but he's mm. got everything just meticulously you know a good use of space and that mood lighting with those different colored lights uh, and i think that's um something i've tried to recreate on a very small level here just to give an atmosphere because i think yeah. uh you know it, it's just um it's calming and uh you know and i enjoy it and it just gives that little bit of bit of mood mood lighting is great for that sort of stuff well that's uh, that's what it's all about I mean, those people that were set up and worked with the, the original Blackpool exhibition all those years ago in the 70s and 80s didn't know what, what trend they were setting, really, when it came to <laughs> showcasing and, and displaying Doctor Who props and costumes. Yeah, well, I mean, and obviously the, the high UV lights and stuff, it can be detrimental to props and things. So, um, yeah, now we know. Like, uh, some, yeah, so now we know. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know and I think it's... Uh, and, and as I said, in my collection, I've got a couple of uh, original pieces um, and one of my favourite bits is I've got a pair of uh, gloves from, a Sideman gloves from the Invasion, um, which uh, I managed to get hold of a while back and uh, they're now locked in behind the glass, never to leave. <laughs> <laughs> it it but, never uh, seems to amaze me, Mark, how all these things from a, um, a, a Britain's Tea Time family show from all those decades ago, uh, managed to find themselves all around the world. And you hear about things like, oh, the Cybermen's gloves from the invasions are with you in Australia and such and such is in Singapore and this is in um, this is in Canada or, yeah. or wherever. You know, it, it never ceases to amaze. I mean, how did these things travel? <laughs> <laughs> it's, and I guess it's it's just something evocative with with the, the program. Like it, it means a lot to a lot of people and a lot of kids growing up it was their escapism um, from the world sometimes. They could just mm. switch on that box and sit in front of it and be absorbed, you know, in that program and what was before and after it for, you know, as they were a kid and, you know, in, in the playground you'd talk about it all the time. What did you think of this episode? You know, kids running around pretending to be Daleks, you know. it's It, it was just a, a fun time for the imagination and I think that as adults I think, as we get older and closer to that other end of the spectrum in life, we become more nostalgic. And I think um, that's probably what it is for me, the nostalgia. Um, and that's what I like to be surrounded around things that I grew up with as a kid, things that I treasured and enjoyed. Um, and I think that's what. Um, oh, listen to you being all sentimental. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> also, well, listen. Let, let's talk about. I mean, as we mentioned, that you you did um, pack a lot into your visit to to the UK last year. So you you got to you got up to to Neil's museum of of sci-fi. Um, Alex was with you. I got to meet you there as well, which was fantastic. But you went you went all over the shop as well because you all, you 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 came on here. You came on yeah. to who's because you you went to Western Supermare as well, didn't you? Managed yes. to get to, to the 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 art exhibition there as well. I um and I also documented part of my trip because obviously not everyone could uh, you know I was thinking of people obviously more so outside of the UK who couldn't uh, I was very fortunate that I squeezed so much in and there were so many things going on yeah like the uh, Western Supermare uh, sixty years of Doctor Who art was fantastic which we did our little chat about that 
Um, yeah, people can see that, by the way. I'll just tell them uh, you can see that um, uh, Mark's visitations for us in the visitations playlist here on Who's Views. Go and have a look at that. But uh, and that was that that was a long stretch to get there for me, but uh, well worth the effort to see all mm. of that um, art that was mostly in private hands to be yeah. all collated together in one uh, one little place, which was really nice. Mm. Um, and again, going up to Neil's museum was one of those things that I just had to do um, because unfortunately I missed Cardiff. It's you know no longer around the exhibition, um, so I'm a bit too late for that. Worlds of Wonder, I was a bit too late for that as well. Well, you never uh, know. I just Worlds of Wonder, of course, is um is coming to New Zealand. So if, if you know common sense would dictate they should pop over to Australia. That's common sense, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, common sense doesn't always prevail, JT. Very, very true. <laughs> But Fingers crossed. At, at least, at least, uh, at least, it's a, a short plane ride away if I really want to go. Oh well, there you go. So, there you go. Yeah, so uh, it, it's it's probably easier for me to jump on a plane to fly over to New Zealand to have a look at that. So, mm. uh, but we'll wait. I'll wait. Mm. It's there for a few months when it when it kicks off, and if uh, it's not coming to Australia, I might have to do a mad dash across. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I yeah, can yeah. see that the the mighty K one robot will be there. I haven't really. I haven't heard of. Um, I haven't heard what they're taking over with it at all. It's going to be exactly the same items that was uh, in the UK are being transported mm. across. So last time I saw K one, he didn't have his head. It was sitting on the floor at Langdon because he was so big that uh, he didn't it's fit really in the display case. <laughs> <laughs> well, to see him in all his glory now, Mark, if you get the chance, he, he looks absolutely fantastic and he's sparkling. You know, I was really impressed because the K1 robot for, for you know, for us in the, um, in the UK, he was always around, whether it would be in Blackpool or, or Longley or Langollen or wherever. So you sort of were, were aware of him. But it, it, you, it, what I'm trying to say is you became a bit complacent because he was always there mm. somewhere. But when I actually saw him fully restored, shining and lit amazingly, so he was shiny, you know, absolutely this metallic piece of art. I was, I was actually, oh my goodness, he's absolutely stunning. Yeah, no, it's, uh, as I said, it's quite intimidating to stand there and look at him. And, it, it, and as I said, my memories of, of traveling to Langolan, you know, 20 years ago, I'm looking up, but there's the head sitting on the ground, uh, you know, right in front of me. But still, yeah. So it was a little bit. Oh wow, there he is, and oh, there's his head. So, but again, that was uh, great. And I was lucky. I filmed uh, that whole exhibit um, back in 2003. Yeah. Um, when I was <clears throat> visiting, because I had a mini DV camera, and the place was empty. Unfortunately, very sadly, it was towards the end of the time of the exhibition, and they Dapol had lost the rights. Uh, to make the figures, That's right. um, and I think I was there in May, May two thousand three, and the exhibition closed. I think in the December, so they're yes, on the yeah. last the last legs. Mm. Um, but mm. it, for me, it was great because uh, I knew and I'd done some research and realised that Bessie, the original Bessie, was downstairs locked away. So um, I approached the girl in the shop and just said, you know, hey, excuse me. I believe that Bessie might be here. Is there any chance that I could get downstairs to have a look? Because obviously it was just the main exhibition that was open. The shop was virtually empty. There was not much left on the shelves. Oh. Um, but the girl was very good. She obliged me and she said, I've got my lunch break. Come back and see me in half an hour and I'll take you downstairs and show you Bessie. So oh. at least I got to – and I got to sit in Bessie. So, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, that was that was a nice, surreal moment. Yeah, I bet it was, yeah. I mean, as, as I say, though, you did pack a, an awful lot in. You managed to get to Cardiff, though, yeah. didn't you? you? You hooked up with um, yes, with, with, with Bedouia. And so that's when I think, yeah, so I caught up with Bedouia, so, uh, which was really great. Uh, he uh, took some time out. Um, we sort of chatted after the show that I'd done. I think it was the Blink review that we did, and we so got we chatting one, yeah. Uh, yeah. afterwards, and he... Yeah was happy to come down he had a couple hours spare the next day and i had a full day in cardiff so he took me around, and he took and around the patient, it. Didn't he? yeah show me some of the locations for the new series and uh um and it's funny because 
uh, you know, then linking it back to those memories of watching it when it was rebooted back in 05 and just walking around and the Dweers going, you know, this is the, the, the shop where, you know, she used to work. Yeah. And I'm looking and then there's the there's the laneway where the runaway bride was. That's the where they put the false ATM machine in the wall. Um, you know, so it was it was really good and everything was so close together. Um, mm. but it was great. You know, we spent a couple of hours together um and just wandered around uh yeah. and had a really quick catch up and chat and unfortunately the rain was starting to be a little bit of a problem, but we still managed to get around and look at a few things and uh yeah, so no, that was that was really good um, that he was so obliging to help me out with that because I'd read his uh, unofficial exhibitions book, which I couldn't put down. It was really good. So we chatted about some of the stuff about the exhibitions because I know he's a big a big fan of uh, exhibitions. So, mm. um, but, uh, yeah, so, and it was nice to go back and read about Langollen um, in his, th- uh, his thoughts on that and then sort of comparing my memories of it as well. Which was really nice. So, yeah. um, but then um, I also got to do the uh, Gunnersbury um, exhibition that Mike Tucker's props uh, that was put together. Um, what, what was that like? That was that was good. Um, yeah, some people say, "Oh, there's not a lot of stuff there," but you sort of have to look at spread the stuff spread out um, throughout the throughout the building mixed in with all other sorts of stuff. But it's not just Doctor Who, though. It's, uh, you know, the first room is, you know, Starbug from Red Dwarf, some yeah. Star Wars stuff, and then and then you've got the Vok robot um, that's, you know, set up in the, that big display wall there. And uh, it caught me by surprise because there's a smoke machine in there that just pumps out uh, <laughs> to give a bit of atmosphere. And, uh, oh. yeah, I was sort of standing right near it looking up at this rock robot and all of a sudden a big and out yeah. comes the smoke. So, <laughs> uh, All the drama. But, uh, yeah, so that was good. And then obviously um, uh, one of the Dalek, original Daleks from Remembrance was there in behind glass. Um, and throughout the building at different levels there was uh, bits and pieces about visual effects and props and costumes and, um, you know, about making film history within the area. Uh, and, again, I did a little uh, video for that on my uh, little YouTube, modest YouTube channel. Yes. Again, for me, it was just about sharing. Uh, and, and it goes on. If anyone wants to have a look, you can look under the Doc MD 74 That's my little tag on YouTube. But, uh, again, it was more aimed for those who couldn't get to it. Um, mm. Because it's just wonderful to have all those you know classic pieces together um, in one place to wander around. So I probably spent an hour and a half in there, just uh, you know. And then there's some drawers that you pull out, and there's some other artifacts and props and cyber guns and you know, other bits and pieces, which is really cool. <laughs> um, but uh, no, so I, again, it was just go go go, JT, from one place to another with camera in one hand and. Uh, and map in the other, just trying to. <laughs> yeah. And I, I squeezed in a, a visit to the Who shop um, as well, and went and yes. saw Alex in there, and and the guys in there. Um, that was really good. I got to have a look through uh, the museum that she runs down there as well. We had a little Absolutely. bit of a technical issue when I tried to book um, for the museum. I turned up on a day that wasn't a. But anyway, they, we worked something out. We come to her, and Alex was really good and accommodating. Oh, she's lovely, and isn't she? Such a, yeah, and we had a good chat and and shared some stories. So, uh, but again, oh, um, you know, the price there. and Toby in the shop there was really good too. So, uh, I managed to squeeze in a couple of visits there um, before I went mm. home. So, but, uh, and how, yeah, and no, how, it was, did you spend some money in there, Mark? <laughs> Yes, yes, uh, oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> well, that's the problem. You go all the way to, to, to the UK and, you know, I had to fill the suitcase up. So, uh, <laughs> because, you know, uh, you know, it's a decision. Do I take the clothes home or do I take the Doctor Who merchandise home? So, um, thankfully, DHL are really good with sending boxes home. 
Oh, <laughs> yeah, lots of them, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad you got to go to the Who shop as well, because that, again, that's another um, ex museum exhibition type stuff. And, and Alex has got some nice little bits and pieces in there as well, hasn't she? Mm, yes. Yeah. No. There's some really um, and uh, the the TARDIS console from the Ultimate Adventure and oh yes, I think uh, John Pertwee's John Pertwee's cape from one of the uh, annuals. And obviously, we're discussing about um, Mr. Pertwee and you know trying to remember his lines, and so you yeah. know there'd be scribble all over the the console, the console so he could yeah. remember some of his lines. God bless him. So. Mm. Um, but yeah, and some some really cool pieces in there, and uh, yeah, it it was good just to be surrounded again by stuff that I don't see every day over here. And I guess that was a big thing for me is to do as much as I could, experience as much as I could, and take it all in, and document my trip as much as I could. So I've got some good memories to take home, and obviously forging friendship as well. That was that was another good thing as well. So and it was really great that I got time to meet up with a few people in person. Uh, yeah. And to maintain those friendships, because uh, obviously in the Hugh community, it's uh, it's nice to have uh, to be able to speak with people on similar wavelengths. Well, I think it's needed every now and then, isn't it? You know, <laughs> because well, otherwise we'd go insane. It's, you also got I talking think, about you know, fans. Talking about talking about fans, Mark. You also got to go to an ex uh, to um, a convention. I mean, you really did pack it in. Yes, I did, and uh, that was the time controller event at mm. uh, the Macbeth mm. Centre, the old Coal Hill School. Yes. Again, that I was remember. just – I was uh, at the tail end of my planning for my trip, and I just saw a very small Facebook feed um, pop up, and I looked at the date, and I went, oh, my God, that's when I'm still in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course – and, and then I saw it was only limited to 100 tickets and I'm like, oh, my God, I think they'd literally just announced it and they'd sold out overnight. Um, and I think I got, yeah, I think I got ticket 89 out of 101 wow. tickets or whatever they want. Wow. So, um, and it was it was awesome uh, to walk around Coal Hill School. It's changed. Some of the, I mean, the external hasn't changed. No, but, it looks exactly um, the same. Yeah, some of the internal stuff, obviously, with uh, change and development and what they're running there now. Um, but just the big thing was we got to do, like, we broke up into a little tour groups. So we were taken to, you know, outside of the building where the TARDIS materialises against the wall and the Doctor and Ace get out and they have the conversation about anachronism, about the radio. And, and then there's the doorway where the, the little girl standing in that, you know, um, and then doing the tour on the external, we're looking up and seeing that classroom window where obviously the dark shuttlecraft comes down, mm. and uh, yeah, and Sylvester's hanging by the by his uh, umbrella. Mm. And then so that was all fantastic. And then we go upstairs, go up the stairwell where you know Ace is running away from the Dalek as it appears on the stairwell. That was great to just see all that in the flesh. Um, and then obviously. We go into the, the room, open the doors, and lo, lo and behold, there's Sophie Aldred in her ace costume, standing there with an Imperial Dalek, so and a baseball bat. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And then towards the end of that conversation, Sylvester walks in. So, yeah. it, it, as I said, it was, it was an amazing day, um, and got to uh, you know meet quite a few people. Um, and it was funny, I was standing in line with someone waiting for an autograph and they go, are you Mark? And I'm like, oh. I'm the only Aussie standing in the, yeah, you've got those, those your hookay, that's really cool. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> wow, how did they find out about you? Well, because I, look, it's been the last couple of years I've been a little bit more um, sharing of my collection and stuff and that's why right. I've, I've got an updated um like i've got a videos back to my original who cave and yeah. that all came about through keith barnfather so i'd posted something on a site and keith reached out to me and said that looks fantastic my original who cave um because i think i put some photos of it lit up at night and i'd made the police box sign to go over the door and it was lit up at night and then all the colored lights inside the shed and it just and the 
the shed was hard as glue. So I think it just invoked the uh, Keith was like, Can you can you film some stuff for me? Can you yeah, send it to me and so because uh, he was doing yeah. the documentary uh I think this one, lockdown. This oh, right, yeah. Yeah, so I um I submitted some stuff to Keith and uh didn't think anything of it and just thought, oh, I might get a photo or two on. And then uh, I got featured in it about three times throughout the thing, and it was a bit of a focus on the Who Cave. And um, but yeah, it was fun, and that was probably that dipped my toe into the water a little bit, and it's probably rolled rolled it on since then. Um, but yeah, so I've just put my collection on YouTube just to share it with people, just uh, like minded collectors, and I like in, I enjoy looking at you know people's collections and how they display them. Um, and, you know, it's nice to see other people's passions and how how they. You know, their little escapism from the world. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and that's why I said it, it rolled from there. And I managed to catch up with Keith finally uh, at the same convention, uh, you know, because I said, mate, I'm only here. I'm going home soon. Any chance for a catch up coffee? And he goes, Are you going to uh, the convention? I said, Yep. And uh, so that was great. So we got a quick chat. I mean, we're all busy people. So we got a, a time for a short conversation. Um, and David Howe, I also caught up with him. Now I've been yeah. reading his books for a long time. And David and Samantha, I, I that was another thing I slipped in with Alex, actually. Alex and I did a bit of a road trip. So uh, You did, yeah. yeah, on your way back to yeah. London, yes, because you stopped yeah, in on so, David's yeah. new, new, new uh, well, his own little exhibition of merchandise, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, again, Classic timing. Alex messaged me one day and said, hey, David's just opened his <laughs> private museum. What do you think? And I said, do it, mate. Whatever. I'm happy to uh, to do it. And so we made it work. We spent a couple of days up with Neil and caught up with yourself. And, um, and then we sort of just made our way back down on the Sunday and managed to find time to – David had run a little open day with a few other people. So we got to go in there. Um, bought a couple of his books via Telos and got them signed and uh, we had some good conversations and we compared notes with uh, Who Caves, so, yeah. uh, which was good. Um, yeah, we had a chat about my collection and how I've displayed it and, and vice versa. But uh, it, he's got a lot, of, a lot of stuff, a lot of um, nice to see all his character stuff lined up, uh, you know, and some, some character prototype stuff as well. Um, but yeah, it, it's got a um, yeah really well laid out. Probably a building the similar size to what I've got for for a portion of his collection, and then obviously the rest of it's in another area. But uh, mm. it was well worth the look and the conversation. And, yeah, uh, yeah. So we kept in touch. But, and then ironically, after seeing them there a week later, I saw them at Time Controller again. So uh. Uh, and caught up with them. Again. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, it was a no, good, it was, it was it was a good year for you to come over, actually, wasn't it? With it being the 60th anniversary year, because there was actually a lot going on every single month, really, in the UK, yeah. in one part of the country or the other. And I, I think I just was trying to pick a time frame because back when I was pre-planning and bought my tickets, there wasn't anything announced. Um, so I was running on a whim that do I travel close to November? You know, usually they start releasing things or promoting things. I was in the hope that there'd be, uh, you know, some sort of convention or something going on that I could go to while I was in the UK. Um, so by chance, as I was getting towards that time ready to go, that's when these things sort of started coming out. And uh, and then uh, Alex was my eyes and ears, essentially. And uh, <laughs> we would converse almost on a daily basis about, and then once it became a reality, we started planning. And it was good that Alex had joined me. We, he just happened to have a window of yeah. time. Um, and it was, you know, and, I, you know, we're, we're great mates now and we'll continue to be great mates. So um, it's, uh, yeah, it, it, was a, it was a fun time sharing stories and laughing and, you know, reminiscing about who growing up and, you know, laughing at the bad stuff that we all used to. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was great. <laughs> I, well, I mean, I mean, it's great. It's great that you managed to get over. It was great to meet you face to face as well. But it's, um, it, it's just, I can't. I still can't get over that you packed so much into those three weeks. That's why I was, I was a bit surprised it was three weeks because it seemed, it did seem like you were here for longer. But well done, you. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't. I yeah. don't be back over anytime soon, will you? Well, 
Yeah, funny you say that because <laughs> I'm working on a cunning plan to come back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, watch out, 2020. What, what next year, 2025? So, do you think? Yeah, I've, mm. I think I've convinced my my darling wife that uh, we're going to do a Europe UK trip. So um, we're just in the very early planning stages, but if I can make it work, there might be some catch ups in order. Oh, fantastic! Well, let me know. I look forward to that. That'd be great to see you. Um, listen, yeah. great chat. Thank you so much for for spending some time to come on back onto Who's Views with some chit chat. Um, as I say. Mark's been on the show quite a few times now, and you can actually see his uh, specific report about the Western Supermare Museum, all about the Doctor Who art over 60 years on our visitations playlist. And I don't think this will be the last time we would see you either, Mark. I'm sure you're going to be back very soon. No, you can't get rid of me now, JT. <laughs> that's that's absolutely fine that's fine <laughs> so listen again thanks very much for coming on lovely to to just have a quick catch up for you please do like the video and if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe to our our, our channel lovely to have you here and uh thank you very much for all your support mark thank you lovely to see you as ever and uh, look forward to the next time that we, we we catch up but for the moment thanks very much for joining us i hope you enjoyed this chit chat with mark we'll see you again very soon Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.